my mind runs back to uh, encounter 25 years ago. The place was Hiroshima, the year was 1995. I was with my parents with great anticipation waiting to meet our special guest of the morning. They were collectively referred to as Hibukshas, people who were affected by the bomb. That meeting that lasted for 90 minutes has never moved away from my heart. Each one of them who honored us with their testimonies had experienced personal loss of life. They had seen destruction at a scale that was never seen before. And they had lived through the moments where the ardent task of building a new society from ground zero was there. Yes, Hiroshima lost over 350,000 people in total to the atom bomb. An atom bomb that was used in Hiroshima for the first time, deployed and seen how human life could be destroyed. 70,000 buildings were destroyed, 13 square kilometers all at once affected by this atom bomb. I remember not just what the Hibukshas told us that morning, because in their testimonies, I could hear the resonance of what my father picked up as a young man in Hiroshima. The seeds of peace, the commitment to active peace building, and a desire for the entire world to be peaceful. I also heard in them the commitment of the brothers and sisters of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but also the people of Japan, so that no more Hiroshimas ever happened. Yes, brothers and sisters, every time a nuclear bomb is tested somewhere in the world, our brothers and sisters gather at the memorial in Hiroshima to say, no more Hiroshima. Every time a global leader fails to sign an accord, our brothers and sisters in Japan come together and say, keep your promise so that the world is more peaceful. 75 years later, how can that commitment to peace take practical forms? There can be many, many things that we can do. I only want to present two to you on this day when we celebrate the Coimbatore Peace Festival to mark the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. One, affecting the big picture. If we create a more equal society, if we bridge inequities, if we work for inclusive development, we will give peace a chance. If we don't do that, we see in crises, in conflicts, in situations like the current COVID-19, the ones who are more vulnerable, the ones who are marginalized, the sections of our society which are poor get the burden even more. So let us work for peace. Let us bridge these inequities. And the second is something that is very close to my heart, and that is the fragile agenda of child development. In peace times, we know that investments are made for children. When children go to school, when they study, when they have education for gainful livelihoods, together they become peaceful individuals and our societies give industry, enterprise, connectivity, a much more positive opportunity to thrive. But when crises happens, we forget them. Remember Sadako from Hiroshima? She was in that hospital bed making peace grains, hoping that she will live and have a prosperous life. Alas, she lost her life. But just like Sadako, amongst the two billion children of the world, there are many who experience pain, deprivation, poverty, disconnection, even today. Let us remember that children will benefit most if we invest in peace. But there is one thing that I have seen during this COVID-19 crisis. When we work with young people, when we work with children, we really give ourselves a chance to build peace concretely. We all know building positive peace is a long-term commitment. This peace festival, I started off with my friends as a 19-year-old. I haven't stopped being part of it for 29 years. Yes, brothers and sisters, peace building is a long-term commitment, but it requires little pieces of concrete action. So may I leave you with three questions. Can we listen to young people more? Can we work with young people more? Can we see what they have to say in terms of what we have done right and what we have not done right? Together, as my father often said, we can build peace. Together, we can create that world because as Mahatma Gandhi said, clash of arms will not create a peaceful world. It is in the dialogue between people, in the lived justice of human beings, that we really sow the seeds of ahimsa, of nonviolence. And when ahimsa prevails, peace is given a possibility. 
In this Coimbatore Peace Festival, let us all rededicate ourselves to active peace building, listening to children, working with young people, building a more equal society can be that new and 21st century phase of peace building. Let us work together for peace. Together for peace.